Hey everyone, what's going on? It's your girl Miss Anna Little Call and I'm back with another one. I want to say this topic that I'm going to be discussing this afternoon was something I was supposed to be talking about yesterday. However, I fell asleep. <laughs> so I didn't get a chance to, you know, unfortunately talk about this yesterday, but I'm definitely going to be talking about it today. So this is a story that is, is posted in the new New York Post and it deals with the conflict of religion and extracurricular activities and what happens when a person who doesn't who can't meet certain um, events or appointments gets punished and this is according to the accuser so I'm going to give you my synopsis I'm going to give you my analysis of all of this and what I feel is the issue and whether this is the truth. So it reads, Hebrew Israelite teen sues for $4 million after alleged forced piece of feeding. A former high school football player wants $4 million in legal damages after his coaches allegedly forced, forced him to eat pizza covered in pork grease, according to a lawsuit. The apparent piece of punishment Levied because the student missed a mandatory weightlifting session, violated the student's religious beliefs. He claims in a federal court. He claims in a federal court paper. The student, identified only as K.W., is a Black Hebrew Israelite, a faith which forbids consuming pork or pork residue, according to the litigation filed in Ohio. K.W. was a starter on the football team at McKinley High School in Canton, Ohio. But after he skipped a mandatory weight lifting session, he was confronted with a large pepperoni pizza, the suit says. Head coach Marcus Watley, who has since been fired and other district employees, allegedly forced KW to sit alone in a chair in the gym as his 30-odd teammates lifted weights and sprinted in a circle around him. KW was told if he didn't eat the whole pizza, his future on the team would be in jeopardy. He claimed in court papers. His teammates, who were not allowed to stop their exercises until he finished, allegedly threatened him. He charged. After his religious objections, KW was allowed to remove the pepperoni. But the pork grease residue was still on the pie, he alleged. The whole May 2021 fiasco was captured on surveillance video, according to court papers. After he ate the pizza, the coaches forced him to run up and down the football field and practice duck walks, said the student who later switched schools. He's seeking $3 million in compensatory damages and $1 million in punitive damages. Watley and other coaches have denied the allegations and in July filed a defamation suit against the family and school district, the Canton Re Repository said. When... The story first broke last spring. We immediately came forward with evidence, including statements from more than a dozen eyewitnesses, showing that the wild accusations that the coaches forced KW to eat pizza against his religion were false and defamatory. Peter Patakos, a co the coach's attorney, said, according to the paper, the coaches said they didn't force KW to eat anything, offered him chicken nuggets as an alternative. And that KW chose to pick off the pepperoni and eat the pot. The paper reported. The school district did not immediately return a request for comment. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you my, my take on this. And I'm going to back up. Because this is legal. Now. The coach got fired. The coach doesn't work there anymore. We don't know why the coach isn't there. But what we do know. Yeah, he was fired. Okay, so according to the New York Post, it does. There was another article that said that the coach is uh, Ohio coach is fired for giving play a pork against his religious beliefs. So 
the story was first reported back in June of 2004. So I'm going to go back and read it because it was a highlight. I didn't catch that. So it reads, eight high school football coaches in Ohio were fired for allegedly forcing a player to eat pork against his religious beliefs as a punishment for missing practice, according to reports Friday. Head coach Marcus Watley and seven assistant coaches at McKinley Senior High School in Kansas had initially been suspended after allegedly ordering the 17-year-old Hebrew Israelite to eat an entire pizza with pepperoni residue, according to the Canton Reporter. The city school board voted unanimously Thursday to not renew Wiley's coaching contract after an investigation found he had engaged in inappropriate demeaning and divisive behavior. During the May 24 incident, the local paper reported, seven assistant coaches also lost their jobs. The investigation found that the identified coaches engaged in action that constituted inappropriate, demeaning, and divisive behavior in a misguided attempt to instill discipline in the student athlete. District Superintendent Jeff Tarbert said in a statement. Tarbert said the decision to strip the coaches of their jobs was made based on surveillance video of the ordeal, which took place in the school's gym. During the incident, the coaches allegedly forced the boy to eat the pizza because he skipped a voluntary strength and conditioning practice May 20th due to an injured shoulder. The coaches allegedly told the boy his teammates would be forced to do extra drills and that he would lose his position on the team if he didn't eat it, according to the lawyer, student lawyer, Ed Gilbert. He is of the belief that, and that's what hurts him so bad, that the coaches knew of his beliefs and wanted to punish him and it's our view that it was done intentionally and that it was a punitive act. Gilbert told the New York Times. The coach told him in order to have respect and stay on this team, you have to eat the pizza. The team was reportedly shouted at by coaches and teammates as he ate the pizza after removing the slices of pepperoni. Gilbert said the student is now in therapy because of the harassment. The boy's family has said, has said it plans to sue the school district. Now this was... Reported on June 4th, 2021. Now. He did this shit. And I was going to say anyway. I believe it. And I'm going to tell you why. There are a lot of black people. In America. I can't speak for anywhere else. But in America. That do not like the Hebrew Israelite church. They don't want to have. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to come in contact with it. They They have a hatred for it. That is very, very, very strong. And the reason why they have a hatred for it is because it challenges everything that is of the world. So, the Hebrew Israelite church, or the, the, the Hebrew Israelite is not a church, it's a way of life. Like, for instance, being a Hebrew is who you are, is the lineage. An Israelite is somebody who is of the children of Jacob. Or Israel, as he was renamed by the angels. So the reason why they call Hebrews is because they cross, because it deals with crossing water and moving about. And the Hebrews were basically always trying to find a permanent place. First, they were in before they went to. First, they was in Israel. No, not they was not. They returned to Israel. Then they went to Egypt. Then they went back to Israel. But it took them between the time of Moses and the time of Joshua to finally settle. And then after the fall of Israel in 70 AD, they dispersed into a whole bunch of places throughout the world. And then many of them not just only ended up in Africa, but also in the Americas. And believe it or not, even in Europe. Now, there is a theory that I won't discuss at this point. And with this topic, but y'all know what the theory is. Y'all know what it is. But I want to get back to KW because I think KW's story between his relationship with Coach Watley is important. I believe Coach Watley disdained and did not like KW because he didn't want a Hebrew Israelite really on that team. He didn't want to deal with it because if you're trying to win championships, whether it's local or statewide, and you have a starter on your team. How can you have a starter who is not going to be able to play in certain games or even be able to have to or will have the obligation of Shabbat over 
playing a game or missing practice. Now, if you know about the Hebrew Israelite, you know, faith and practices, they pra- they observe Shabbat from Friday evening when the sun goes down up until Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Once Sunday comes, they can participate in anything as long as it's not sinful according to the eyes and laws of Yahweh, Yahweh, the Most High. So this young man chose to be on a football team. Now, there's a lot of things in football that I'm surprised his parents allowed him to be on a team because there's a lot of, you know, head button. There's a lot of, you know, touching. Um, there's a lot of things that is a little bit, you know, sort of where it's conflicting with the religion. And that could have bothered Watley. Like, why is this kid on a team when his religion, he has this, this religious obligation. He's a starter. I don't really even, I feel that he shouldn't be on it, but I can't really kick him off. So I believe that the last straw in Watley was when the when the kid basically missed a voluntary practice. And when that happened, it was like, I'm going to get him. And he made that boy eat the entire pizza with pepperoni and had pork residue because he was humiliating him. He was tired of him, but he also wanted to check to see how bad he wanted to be in the world. It wasn't just being on a team. It was how bad do you really want it? Because why are you really playing football? Okay. Why are you playing football? Why are you on the sport knowing that in your religion, which is true, most of them don't participate in sports because many of the games and the practices are on Saturday, which is Shabbat. So it's like we got to accommodate you. I'm just saying per se so that we don't violate your rights, but you're also missing practices and he just snapped. But he humiliated him because he did not like the religion. And he didn't want that kid on the team. That's what that was about. Okay. And Marcus Watley is a horrible human being for that. Because regardless of how you feel about religion. And how you feel about this guy missing practice. Due to his religious beliefs. You can't. You can't basically get upset. At this guy being on the team because regardless of what religion he is, he has a right to be on in any sport as long as he's good. He wasn't on the sidelines. He was a starter, meaning that he was able to play. Now, another thing that I have is that the kid did not eat the pepperoni, but they made him eat the pizza that had the residue on the pot. Now. I'm going to say something that may shock a lot of people. But when it comes to the Hebrew Israelite faith, there's a lot of dietary laws that are very, 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 very important to follow. You cannot eat pork. You cannot even eat scavengers of the sea. So you can't eat. Anything that doesn't have scales of fish. So you can't eat shrimp. You can't eat lobster. You can't eat crab. You can't eat anything that doesn't have scales and fish. Okay? You can't eat. You can eat chicken. You can eat beef. But you can't eat like a steak medium rare. It's got to be well cooked. Another thing that you can't. You can do. You can have alcohol. But you can't drink during Shabbat. So you can't get drunk during Shabbat. Another thing too is that you can't have unleavened bread during Passover. That I know for a fact. And it's a lot of dietary laws. But really, to be honest with you, when it comes to even the pizza, I'm shocked that he actually really didn't defy them and threw the shit down. Because a lot of times they have a strict diet. I know Hebrew Israelites and they personally have told me that they can't even eat at restaurants 
because of the fear of mixing food with pork, with um, with scat, with um, with fish, with scavengers, with shrimp, lobster, um, crabs. They are very afraid. Oh, scallops! They can't have scallops. They can't have clams. They can't have any of that. So you'll see a lot of them promote veganism. Um. You'll see a lot of them promote healthy lifestyles and juicing. Now, the ones with the camps, you can tell those men aren't eating like that. And I kind of think the kid, I believe he came from a camp culture. And what another thing is, we don't know what him and the coach, if him and the coach or the coach and the parents could have got into it. There's a lot of later story, but the final thing is this. He discriminated against that kid. He did that to him to punish him because of his religion. And that kid is going to walk away with that $4 million. And Watley's career is done. He don't have a job. And he's not going to get another coaching gig because he's prejudicial. And I feel bad for the kid because I know how it feels when somebody bullies you and of authority and tells you that you can't leave unless you do something. But I will say this too. The young man, if he continues to want to play sports, there's going to be conflict with him and the religion more so than him and dealing with coaches. Because if he's going to go away to college and he wants to play sports, he's not going to be able to say, I have to observe Shabbat on this day. So I can't play this game on Saturday. I can't play this Friday evening game or I can't practice. So there's going to be a lot of issues when it comes to that. And I'm and to me, me and my family, we've talked about this because I witnessed this with a person that I knew as a child. And they were unhappy because they were in the religion and they missed out on a lot of things because activities because they could not participate in sports like they wanted to because of this religion so i mean i'm happy that his parents are allowing him to be a child and allowing him to um you know be able to do things but they have to prepare him and now he's an adult but they have to prepare him to be able to realize if are you going to be in the world where you can live, where you're living like a Christian, where you everything revolves around a Sunday calendar, but everything revolves around Sunday, or do you want to be holy and separate yourself? Because that's what it really is. Because Hebrew Israelites believe they are holy and of the Most High, where you observe the Most High on Saturday. So that's the ongoing conflict that KW is going to have to deal with. But I'm going to wrap it up. It's your girl, Miss Ann Little Cole. I'm signing off. Thank you for listening to this commentary and have a wonderful rest of the day.